So I have a problem. I have this beautiful maple sled to pull my daughter around in, and it worked well in the fresh snow, but we haven't had snow for a few days, and many of the sidewalks here are bare. I took it out for a walk today, trying to stay on the snow as much as possible. After just half an hour of walking, though, the clear coating on the bottom of the skis was almost gone, and they were quite scratched up. At this rate, the sled won't even last a year. So I set out to build some plastic shoes for it. I started with a piece of quarter-inch thick, high-density polyethylene, or puckboard, for its durability and wear resistance. It was cut into strips slightly wider than the width of the existing skis. I decided to make two sets of skis, since they are a wear item, and I already have all the tools set up. I marked out roughly where I wanted the fasteners to go, and drilled them out on the drill press. The position of the holes is not critical, because I will use the plastic skis as a template to transfer the hole positions to the sled, and all the skis will be the same, because they are all drilled together. Each set of holes was tapped with a quarter twenty tap. Since this is relatively soft plastic, the tap can be run straight through without the whole full turn in, half turn out business that you have to do with harder materials like steel. Now it's time to shape the skis. I want them to come all the way up the front of the sled so the front of the skis don't catch on anything. I marked out where I wanted a 90 degree bend and used a heat gun to soften the plastic. You can see in the time lapse that the sheet naturally bends away from the side being heated. It's amazing how much thermal expansion can affect the shape of the material. Once the plastic is soft enough, I pounded it into shape to get a tight bend. It takes a minute or two for the plastic to cool down enough to maintain its shape, but it can be removed and manipulated to refine the shape during this time. I then fastened the ski to the sled with a single bolt to hold it in place while shaping the rest of the ski. This was done by drilling and tapping the front support to the sled. Here is where I realized the first hole in the ski did not need to be threaded. Instead it needed a clearance hole for the quarter inch bolt. That gets drilled out later. Be sure to use an old welding glove to bend the plastic so the clean white plastic becomes permanently dirtied. The rest of the hole locations were marked on the sled and drilled out with a 5 16 drill bit. As you may have noticed, I haven't really measured anything yet, and because of the router table, I didn't have to. This router bit has a bearing on the top which is intended to follow a pattern. The pattern in this case is the sled itself. Any material that's overhanging the edge is trimmed off. Once routed, or routed? Hmm. Once trimmed, the skis are removed and cleaned up on the belt sander. I am using some tools that the average person doesn't have access to, but everything I am doing can be done with common hand tools. This project took me a few hours, but with hand tools, it would only take an hour or two longer. The one larger tool I would recommend is a table saw for making long straight cuts. A small, inexpensive saw 
or a used one, would work. Almost all of my tools were not new when I got them. Next, the bottom edges of each ski were rounded. This can be done with sandpaper or on a router with a radius bit. After assembling and disassembling about six times, it's time for final assembly with a set of stainless steel bolts and washers. When completely reassembled, I think it looks pretty good. Despite the modifications being purely functional and not aesthetic, the bolt heads add a bit of detail to the skis. I wanted to try it out, but my daughter was napping, so instead I took the dog for an epic slow motion ride. I hope you enjoyed this build. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more.